costume dressing, representative attire for the shte in a warrior no. We have laid out here the garments and accessories of a shte that would be worn in a typical warrior no, from the outer garments and the inner garments to the sword, the wig. Uh, this here is the sewing kit that every shte performer should own themselves. Needle, thread, combs, and scissors. Uh, the, the performer is always sewn into the costume for each performance, so cannot actually get dressed up by themselves. Here we have the sword or the tachi that will be attached to the hip uh, by rope uh, of the shte performer. Next to that is the kurotare, the wig. Here we have the pants or the okuchi, a kind of split trouser that will be worn in the lower half. Here we have the upper half. We'll have the uh, inner kimono, which is the white piece on top, and the outer garment, which is the choken, which is blue with the butterflies. Again, a shot of the sewing kit. Here we have the padding to make the shte's stomach larger and the wood brace that is used in attaching the pants. That is the kurotare again, the wig. And again, uh, a picture of the sword. This is the hat that will be on the shte. And finally, the fan and the mask, which is always placed underneath uh, cloth. The job of the shte is to come to the dressing with their inner, under their own underwear and collars. A shte will usually have two collars that are then folded. By the dressers. The job of the shte is to stand as still as possible and the dressers are there to Gently, gently sculpt the cloth. And so you typically have one person in the front, that is the lead dresser, and one person in the back, that is the secondary dresser. They have to keep things straight as the lead dresser puts the front on. So you saw they folded up the collars. The shte then puts his hand inside to keep it flat while the front dresser then fixes the other side. He then asks the dresser to go get his pillow. This is uh, a small pillow used to fill out his middles as uh, he We'll have so many layers on top, you try to have a good balance uh, of uh, top and bottom. So as the front dresser folds the inner kimono on the body of the shte, he also raises up the bottom slightly uh, so that there is more room for his legs to move as his movement uh, in this piece is quite dynamic. And his legs will be hidden uh, by the okuchi, or the split trousers that we'll see in a moment. And so we can fold up the bottom a little bit uh, to make it easier for him to move. The inner kimono is then tied on with the do-obi, or the body belt, uh, do-obi. And it is, as you can see, the, the coordination between the front person and the back person is quite important, and all of this is being done silently as they don't need really to speak. heard him there say shimaru, which means he, I'm tightening, and then the shte, who was getting it tied onto him, said, okay, and so each time anything is tightened onto the shte, they ask him uh, if 
to, to tell them when to stop tightening. So they pull slowly uh, and firmly so that the shite can decide when is tight enough. Here we have the okuchi, which are a kind of costumed or elaborate hakama. Hakama are the typical uh, split trousers that uh, were worn in formal situations. And so they have these okuchi, which are uh, more elaborate and certainly in this case costumed. There is the bane. The bane is there to su provide support. Uh, as you'll see, there's a, a bustle is created uh, when the okuchi is uh, completed, uh, which the bane helps support. So there are two sets of uh, strings here. The first is used to secure the bane, uh, the, the okuchi, to the performer, and the second is to secure the back, and that will be tied in front. And there you can see they pulled the strings down and created the bustle. The front person now will tie the strings here in kind of a decorative cross. This is, again, the choken, which is an outer garment, quite decorative. And the person in the back centers it and prepares it uh, to be tied in the front, making it as flat, again, as possible. This is the koshi obi. And the koshiobi will then be used to tie the outer garment in place. As you can see, a great amount of care is taken. Even though when all is said and done, very little of this um, will really be seen in some ways. But if everything is not put properly in place, the final product uh, looks a mess. So here in the back, we have Omura Sensei sewing the choken in place before they start doing uh, all of the adjustments that need to be done so that it can at least stay in place this much. As this is the dressing for the shite, for the 
second act, uh, when the warrior appears uh, in his true form, uh, he will be reenacting his final battle. And in order to show action, uh, one sleeve of the choken is then removed uh, so that it shows the shte will be active and using that arm outside of his sleeve. Again, trying to keep everything as flat as possible and as neat as possible. in the back, the unused sleeve will now be folded and inserted into the back. I've asked them to take more time than they normally would so as to give you a better view of everything. This is typically done, again, in between the first and second act of the piece Atsumori. So this would be done while the Ai Kyogen uh, is going on, which means you have not nearly this much time. And in some ways, it's more difficult for them to take more time because they're so used to being laser focused uh, and doing this in a kind of uh, not rushed, but uh, intense uh, fashion. So we saw these earlier, these are the Tsuyu, the decorative uh, ropes on the choke end which uh, the dresser will now 
tie up. And you can clearly see that the Shte himself could never put on the costume by himself. Yeah. It takes at least two. And typically there would be uh, the person in front, the person in the back, and then a third person who would be handing off things as uh, necessary so that things are moving quite quickly. The sword is then tied on on top of that. It's a wooden sword that's been lacquered. In order to keep it in, an extra piece of paper or tissue or washi, Japanese paper, is inserted between the sword and the hilt uh, to keep it in place. So that when the shte is about to pull it out, uh, they give it a good tug. And uh, often you might you'll be able to see a small this, that small piece of paper fall out onto the stage. And as you can see here, the connection between the sword and the hilt was a little bit uh, weak, as Omura Sensei said. So he went to get a piece of paper uh, for a little more security. So Omar Sensei has folded up a small piece of washi, traditional Japanese paper, and wedging it between the sword and the hilt. Now it's nicely in place.
the hilt is not sitting as nicely as Hawaii Sensei would like, so he's adjusting it. Just like the movement and the chant of no, the costuming is very considered. Everything in no is extremely considered so that everything is in its place in a proper way. This is the kind of work that takes many years to master. And as you can see here, we have three performers. Each of these performers is a shte performer. And each of these performers performs the role of the shte or the front dresser or the back dresser or the chorus depending on the day all jobs are to be performed by all members of the school on certain times certain days That being said, the more senior performers tend to start to observe the dressing rather than actually participate in the dressing. When a shtay is in their teens and 20s, they're mostly observing and handing off being the third person in the chain. In your 20s and 30s, you are often the back dresser and in your 30s and 40s and 50s uh, you move up to the front dresser and then beyond that you start to observe again to make sure the younger folks are doing the jobs as it's supposed to be done so we have asked Omar sensei here uh, to kindly uh, return to his role uh, as a dresser Here we have Omar Sensei holding a mask and presenting it to the shte. We saw it earlier with the cover on it. And that is the way that it remains until the shte is ready to don it. The mask is very much more than a prop. It is for all intents and purposes, a sacred element uh, that great care is taking of. One is not to touch the front of the mask, only the sides of the mask where the, um, where the strings hold the mask in place. So he has gotten fully dressed. He sits down in front of the mirror. 
he's checking to make sure that on the back there are small pads placed so as to keep the mask off of the Shtay's face. And he noticed that one of the small pads had fallen off. So he takes the mask and then he bows to it. In some ways, asking for permission to receive the spirit of the mask. Also out of respect to the craftsman who, who made the mask. And they check the levels. And he wasn't happy about the placement of the pads in the pack. So as you can see, he's not happy with the placement of the pads. And once the mask is in place and it's tightened uh, on the face, uh, there's very little chance uh, to fix it. <laughs> so you want to get it right. Now, traditionally, uh, rice paste was used to attach the, the pads. Uh, but now, modern technology, we have uh, double-sided tape. <laughs> And now we'll see if he's satisfied. Sometimes the wig is put on before the mask. In the case of a male character like this, the mask is put on first, and then the kurotare, as it's known, uh, is placed on second along with the eboshi hat.
and the strings of the hat are then wound around the strings of the mask. Placed on top. And tightened and tied underneath. Then for further assurance, the strings of the hat are sewn into the strings of the mask. And then we have a hachimaki that is tied over the forehead. A kind of hairband, if you will. And now the hachimaki is sewn into place. Delicate work around the uh, head and ears of the shte. Costumes will only be worn in full performances. Performers rarely, if ever, practice with costumes for the reasons of A, the shte tending not to own their own costumes, <laughs> and B, needing this many people to help you get into them. And with his fan, his costume is complete.
here you are.
once for all.